Stan Gibalisco here to discuss the anatomy of a typical vacuum tube. Yes, they still do exist. This particular example shows a pentode vacuum tube. Pen meaning five and toad meaning elements. Five elements. The cathode, the control grid, the screen grid, the suppressor grid, and the plate. You will find a discussion, a brief discussion of vacuum tubes and the electrodes therein <clears throat> on pages 404 to, or pardon me, 402 to 406 in my book, Teach Yourself Electricity Elec and Electronics, 6th edition, published in June of 2016 by McGraw-Hill. That's Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. You can find it on Amazon.com. But the basic symbol for a pentode vacuum tube is shown uh, right here on the left-hand side of this diagram. It's also shown as figure 24-3C on page 405 of Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics. 6th edition. But the electrons flowing through the vacuum in a vacuum tube from the cathode through the grids to the plate don't flow in a straight line through the grids to the plate as the schematic symbol would apply. That's not really the geometry of a vacuum tube. It's the symbol but it doesn't very accurately re reflect the geometry. The filament is typically not shown in the schematic symbol for a vacuum tube just because it would be too complicated uh, in the diagram. It would just make it too messy. Although if it is a directly heated cathode, that means the filament actually is the cathode, then you show only the filament and not the this cathode symbol. This is all discussed in this and other books on vacuum tubes and I'm assuming that you have some basic knowledge of how vacuum tubes function in electronic circuits. If you don't, um, an excellent place to start is chapter 24 in Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, sixth edition, again published in June of 2016 by McGraw-Hill and available on Amazon.com and, if they still exist, your local bricks and mortar bookstore. But the schematic symbol for, for a tube like this or any other vacuum tube does not really show the true state of affairs when it comes to how the electrons flow through the tube. That is shown on the right here in this pictorial diagram, a sort of a cutaway view as you would see a vacuum tube looking straight down at it from the top. If you could just take a saw, very sharp carborundum saw that wouldn't shatter the glass or, or metal or destroy the metal envelope and just saw right through it and look at the elements, you'd see a concentric pattern. The filament would be at the very center which heats the cathode or in the case of a directly heated cathode, the filament and the cathode are the same element. They would appear right at the center uh, and they'd look like a little glowing dot if the tube was on. The control grid would look like a circular mesh or wire screen of some sort centered exactly where the filament is. The screen grid would be a larger circle, a mesh or or screen type arrangement. The screen grid, the control grid, pardon me, would be one wire screen. The screen grid would be a larger screen concentric around that. The suppressor grid, a still larger screen surrounding that. The plate, a solid metal or in some older tubes even carbon cylinder uh, or sometimes a finned or jagged structure in the more high-powered vacuum tubes. It's concentric with all the other elements but inside the outer envelope 
which is usually glass, but in some high-powered vacuum tubes, it may be made out of metal. And then there may be a heat sink outside of that, particularly in some of the more high-powered vacuum tubes, a heat sink possibly even uh, designed to have air pass through it for cooling purposes. A good example of that is the venerable 8877 high-powered vacuum tube. But again, the filament is at the center. Then around that is the cathode, then the control grid, the screen grid, the suppressor grid, the plate, and the envelope. And the electrons flow radially, radially outward in all directions in most vacuum tubes, uh, in the simpler kinds at least. In some of the more complicated vacuum tubes, the electrons follow a, a somewhat more complex pattern, but in general, they flow outward from the center. They don't flow in a straight line like the schematic symbol would indicate from the cathode through these uh, screens or meshes to the plate as if they were um, as if it were some sort of a particle accelerator. It is indeed some uh, an electron accelerator of sorts, but it accelerates them in all directions, radially outward from the center like this. This is the true geometry of a vacuum tube. But of course, you can imagine that if this were the schematic symbol, it would be enormously messy to put in schematic diagrams. But then again, if you're into messy, complicated, beautiful-looking uh, diagrams that will confuse all but the most uh, enlightened electronics enthusiasts. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe you'd rather it look like this, uh, if you're particularly cynical and nasty, I might say. But, but I think that this is a much more a uh, viable option for the schematic symbol. Just keep in mind that schematic symbols for electronic devices and components do not always reflect the geometrical way in which the particles flow inside of that component. And a vacuum tube is an excellent example of that sort of difference between uh, functionality and illustratability. Is that a word? Well, it is now. Stan Jibalisco signing off. Until next time, so long.